Sorry about the uh, technical difficulty there, guys, but you know, iPhone came out with a new lock on their phone. Imagine that. Well, this one doesn't know that because he's still a Samsung user, but Android. he's not cool. Android. I like open source stuff. What does that mean? Apple's a very captive experience. and I'm not saying they didn't do a great job. They did, but it's a very captive experience, and I like, I like the freedom of Android. <laughs> Again, I don't understand what you're Android's saying. got way more apps. They got all kinds <coughs> of stuff. Android works better with the Office the copiers and Microsoft stuff and all kinds of stuff. But welcome to the show today. This is not a video on Android versus Apple. No, it's not. Um, because I think Apple is is a billion dollar or a trillion dollar company. Yeah. So uh, you know it's got that going for them. Yeah. So, but before we waste any more of your time, we are going to go. Hello, Colleen. We're going to go straight into our. Today we got a lot of requests, and thank you everyone for all the um, interaction. But last week we decided, or I'm sorry, we're going to go with price reductions. Uh, yeah, yeah, we did match today on accident too. That was, that was cool. Um, okay, so we are going to go with price reductions. We're going to give you five great tips this week for price reductions. Even though we have such a strong seller's market right now, prices still sometimes need to be reduced, right? Yeah, I agree with that. You're fine. She's agreeing with that. Well, I think some of the sellers kind of. Are pushing the price point do you know what I mean so yeah because it's like, part of you know what's going on because the sellers are thinking hey it's such a seller's market I could probably get more for the house yeah 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 all right so my first tip when it comes to price reductions or my fifth tip whatever you want to do um, is first of all it does start with pricing um, so when you when you first are listing a property and you do your CMA and you should really know what the pricing is in there and then if you try on the high side a lot of times what I do is I always tell my seller exactly where I think they should be priced, but we sometimes overprice them on accident. We sometimes misinterpret the data. You know, I don't know. What do you think? Well, I know Craig's, Craig's like, oh, you know, call the seller and apologize, you know, because you did your job wrong. You know, that's not what I would do. You know, I would be calling and just discussing a price reduction. I always go off showings and traffic versus um, that. So Good morning. I agree right. to disagree on that. Yeah, Nicole doesn't like to apologize to people. Guess what? When I make a mistake, That's I own up true. to it. And I call my seller and I say, listen, I apologize. Uh, I have allowed us to overprice your property, but we need to get we need to get that price lowered to get back in. I don't have a problem apologizing when I make a mistake. Apparently, somebody does. <laughs> That's not true either. That's, well, that's, I just think it's just the would... wording. Do you know what I mean? Um what did you read that? I don't know. What am yeah. I? Well, just keep keep going. We're doing a video here. Um, Nicole's getting notifications on her phone, and she's. It's the day before my vacation, guys, and I am scatterbrained. Sorry. Oh, okay. Well, apparently every show is right before her vacation. <laughs> <laughs> All Not. right. Anyway, always tell the truth in the beginning. <clears throat> you know, if if you if you price something wrong, most of my sellers always know. I'll say, hey, we're gonna try this price. It's on the high side, but. If we don't get an offer in a couple weeks, let's let's lower the price. So I, I always let them know that up front. Um, on the rare occasions, I do totally just overprice a property. I don't have any problem calling them and apologizing for that. But we'll move on to number four. Show them the CMA. You know, realtors, yeah. we don't, you know, it's, it's, most sellers are very intelligent. They're just like us, you know, and it's like, if we show them all this data, hey, all your neighbors sold for 250 and we're at 265 right now, you know, based on that, what do you think the home should be priced at? You know, let them let them make their own decisions, you know? So here's the thing. Like, um, this last season, I won a listing presentation because I actually brought paperwork. And the two other agents that interviewed for that listing brought no paperwork. What? I'm like, No what? paperwork? That's what I said. Gee, I'm Christmas. like, really? Nobody else gave anything? We should do so, a lot of listing presentations. I know. Um, so a CMA is really important and something that the seller can walk away with is really important because they, even if they sign the listing agreement, they, right then, they still want to, you know, sit down and look over those numbers later and whatnot. So they should have something in their hand, um, that they can take a look at. So that's a, that's a great, uh, recommendation. I, I do think, especially with, some people are very analytical and if you go to an analytical yep. person and just do like a verbal, um, you know, presentation, it, it's really going to leave, you're not, you're not catering to them. So, no. so I would always say, um, bring some kind of paperwork just in case. And it's very likely that you are interviewing against another agent and that they are going to bring paperwork. So yeah. Nicole Hansen will bring uh -huh, paperwork. Right. <laughs> so, all right. So 
Number three, we're going to move on to remind them of their motivation. Sometimes, you know, people always want to get as much as they can for the house, but sometimes they need to be reminded. Like, let's say they're getting a job transfer to Texas or something like that. And you might have to remind them, hey, look, are you prepared to make double payments on your house? Are you, are you prepared to, you know, be a landlord while you're in Texas also? You know, just things like that. I think you, you have to ask those, those tough questions. Um, not to scare them, of course, but yeah. it's, it's to be realistic. I mean, statistically, even right now in this dominant seller's market, it's still like a 51 day average days on market yeah. and it's still a 30 days average to close. So you're still talking 81 days on average to get a property sold from start to finish. Yeah, and I think sometimes sellers during the process forget about their motivation. Um, you know, and when you do get an offer, they start to get emotional. And even when they don't have one, that can still be an issue, right? So they start to get emotional, stop, and they forget about why they're selling in the first place, whether it's upgrading, reloading, whatever. And it's a good segue into, hey, you know, we need to price reduce. Segue. Yeah. I just, and whenever anyone uses that word, I always think of those little hard things, you know, those little weird things. I've never been on one of those. Dude, I wish I knew Photoshop because I would Photoshop you into one with like a helmet and you'd be like, Durr, I do a little sure. segue. For sure. <laughs> All right. Anyway. It remind, reminds me of the Mike Tyson video where he's on the hoverboard and he falls. Like I need to look things. that up because I've oh, never seen that one. Oh, it's, it, and he it's hits funny. his head. It looks bad. Okay. I know you just didn't tune in for that. But anyway. Okay. Our second one. Um, <coughs> this is about you looking after your own listing data. You should know how many showings you're getting, how many showings on average. Sometimes you can ask other agents in your office. Like let's say you have a, a house in... Crown Point or something like that and it's not getting any showings, you might want to talk to another agent that's got listings in Crown Point and just ask them, hey, like my house is in this price range, are you getting a lot of showings or how many showings are you getting? Um, sometimes it's good to know. Always check your listings for mistakes. It's very rarely do we have a mistake in a listing, but sometimes that'll that'll affect the number of showings. But if you did, if you've done all that stuff correctly, if you're not getting any showings whatsoever, the, the what I was always trained was you're about 10% overpriced. If you are getting showings but no offers, then you're you're within about 5% of where you should be. Well, I think when I look at it, I always go over the three things with my sellers, location, condition, and price, right? If the location is good, the condition is good, what does that leave? That only leaves price, so you're overpriced. You know, you know and I, that's a great, you know what, and I always use this example. Price is, is key no matter what. I mean, the worst properties are usually like foreclosed properties that have been damaged. They put low prices on those, those sell every day. And I always use this example with my seller. I say, you know, if we priced your house at a million dollars, let's assume it's worth 250,000. If we had priced it at a million dollars, would anyone show up? There, yeah. there will tell you no. Yeah. And then I say, if I priced it for a dollar, what would happen? And they'll say, Craig, it'll be a parade in front of the house with agents. That's how, that's how important price is. Like that's how that simple example which is 100% true, you know, if we put it for a million, no one's gonna show up, and if we put it for a dollar, it's gonna be a, a parade of people. Um, even during the holidays, during any time of year, it won't make a difference. So that's how important price is, even though that's a very, you know, exaggerated I example. I have to give him props for that example, because I like it, I guess. Oh, gosh, this yeah. is our first one. Okay, we can end the show now. <laughs> Nicole finally agreed with something I said. Okay, great. All right, <laughs> show's over, everyone. Uh, okay. I think we're ready to our number one. I know this is yeah. the moment you guys have been waiting for. It is. I know. Price reductions. What's the number one thing? <laughs> Why don't you do this one, Nicole? I feel like you're not really doing anything this show. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, probably not really. But uh, don't wait too long. This is number one thing. Um, you know, when you have a conversation with your sellers, I think on average, most of us like to see price reductions every two weeks so we can keep the home moving. And it can't be like $100. It needs to be like a decent amount, right? Um, and you just need to have that conversation with your seller because what happens if you leave it on and you don't price reduce it and you stop getting showings, people are going to start to think there's something wrong with the property because it hasn't sold yet. So that's why it's super, super important to do that. Yeah, I agree. And I would also say, let me give you a public service announcement for price reductions. Hey agents, no one's checking the hot sheet anymore. Nobody's really doing that. So you lowering it by a hundred bucks is gonna show up on no one's radar, you know? So don't do that, it's just obnoxious. It makes me have to check the <coughs> property history and then I'm like, what is all these hundred dollar price reductions? This is ridiculous. Well, I, it does have some value, so I have to disagree oh, with Craig on this. come on. 
on. It does we, have some value. We made value. so much progress I know, today. I know, I know. But because it's actually going to go price reduction and everybody's going to get alerts on any um, system that they have that the house was reduced, whether it's by a dollar or not. So you're probably Fine. wrong on that one for the record. Fine. Not that I enjoyed saying that. <laughs> Fine. I'll, I'll concede that she's right on this one. <laughs> Aw, uh, see, we were so nice to each other during this video. Maybe it's because we both wore blue today. Maybe. Maybe. All right. Any, anything else? Is that it? That's it. I don't think so. I'm on vacation next week, so Craig's going to probably have a um, guest speaker. I'm the not sure who, but um, at this point. But I will see you guys two weeks from now then. And guys, if you want to have, like, give us ideas for shows that you want to see. We're happy to take suggestions. Um, and we'll see you next week. All right. Thank you guys. Thanks.